Silver Bullet today it requires a sort of multifaceted program of nutrition, exercise, stress management, supplements. It's not good enough just to be natural because the natural program is to age and die. Our genes evolved thousands of years ago when conditions were very different. When our genes evolved, it was not in the interest of the human species for people to live that long because there was very little food. And if everybody lived to 70 or 80, uh, that wouldn't work. So the human life expectancy was 23. That was long enough for you to raise your kids. Your kids were 12 and ready to go out on their own, and, the, and then you died. Uh, everything we've done since has been not natural. We've gone beyond the natural order. That's, in fact, what it means to be human, is to go beyond our limitations. You predict that in 2045, the singularity will happen. Machine and humans are going to merge. And you plan to be there, to be part of it. You're going to be 97. How come? Hopefully younger. Because uh, we will... Uh, it's important to understand the second and third bridge. The second bridge, biotechnology, involves reprogramming biology as if it were a set of software processes. That's basically what it is. We have 23,000 software programs called genes. They were written, quote-unquote, evolved thousands of years ago, uh, when, as I say, it was not in the interest of species to live that long. Uh, we we want to rewrite that code and all of these information processes. I mean, how long do you go without updating the software on your cell phone or your personal computer? Your cell phone updates itself every few days. We have software running in our bodies that hasn't been changed in thousands, sometimes millions of years. We want to rewrite that software. And we didn't even have that software as of a few years ago. Health and medicine used to be hit or miss. It was not an information process. We would just find things through experimentation. Oh, here's something that lowers blood pressure. We don't know why it works. Now we have the software of life. We're making exponentially rapid progress on understanding it, reverse engineering it. We have the means of changing that software, not just in a baby, but in a mature individual. RNA interference can turn genes off in a mature individual. The new forms of gene therapy that can add new genes. I'm involved in a project where we take cells out of the body, lung cells, add a new gene, uh, then replicate the cell a million fold, inject it back in the body, and this is actually cured a fatal disease, pulmonary hypertension, and it's undergoing human trials. There are a thousand different drugs and processes in the development and testing pipeline to either turn genes off or add new genes or change some other aspect of the information process of biology. This is in an early stage, but one of my theses is that information technology doubles in power for the same cost every year. This has certainly been true of computers. You can just look recently, you can buy an iPhone today that's twice as good for half the money. That's a fourfold increase in price performance mm -hmm. uh, just in the last year or two. This has been going on ever since 1890. Uh, I've put computers on this graph, logarithmic graph, going back to the 1890 American census, and it's a very smooth progression of exponential growth. We're doubling the power of computation every year for the same price. When I was a student at MIT, we all shared a computer took up half a building. The computer in your cell phone today is a million times cheaper, yeah. a thousand times more powerful. That's a billion-fold increase in price performance since I was a student. We'll do it again in 25 years. And it's not just computers. It now applies to health and medicine. 15, 20 years from now, we will really be able to completely reprogram our biology away from disease, away from aging. So that's the second bridge. The that's the second bridge. Right. And the third and the, bridge. The third bridge is going beyond biology, not just perfecting biology and reprogramming it, but actually going beyond it. Because even if we perfect biology, it's not as powerful as what we can rebuild if we rebuild matter and energy at the molecular level. That's nanotechnology. Uh, one application, for example, is to send blood cell size devices inside the bloodstream, little robots the size of blood cells. That's just like your white blood cells. That's a little robot. It's, an, it's a biological one, but it's intelligent. It can find a bacteria and recognize, ah, oh, that's an enemy, and, and destroy it. But we can actually do a better job because your white blood cell takes about an hour to do it. It, it sometimes gets confused. There are autoimmune disorders. It sometimes attacks your own tissues, it it's, uh, doesn't recognize every bacteria or virus, we can build new ones that are a hundred times faster that can, be, that can download new software from the internet for new pathogens. Uh, and these have been already designed, 
their early experiments with nanotechnology inside the body. One scientist actually cured type 1 diabetes in rats with a blood cell size device that's nano-engineered, has seven nanometer pores, lets insulin out in a controlled fashion. At MIT, they have a blood cell size device that can detect cancer cells inside the bloodstream and destroy them. So it's already happening. Well, these are early experiments in animals, so that it's not yet perfected. It's in an early stage. But it's important to understand these technologies are information technologies. They'll double in power every year. Doubling every year means multiplying by a thousand in 10 years, a million in 20 years. So the golden era of biotechnology, perfecting biology, reprogramming it, uh, that's maybe 15 years away. The golden era of nanotechnology, like blood cell size devices. So when Ray Kurzweil is going to be transferred to a machine, to a computer, what happens to the old Ray Kurzweil? Well, I don't think the scenario is we take Ray Kurzweil here and we transfer it to some other machine here. It's not going to be that kind of discrete process. It's going to be a gradual process where we add some computers inside our bodies and brains. Those computers have software. At that point, we are a combination of biology and, and machine. And if that sounds very futuristic, I'd point out that there are people doing that already. Parkinson's patients can put a computer inside their brain that replaces the neurons that were destroyed by that disease. Uh, and that has software running on it. The latest generation actually allows you to download new software to the computer inside your brain from outside the patient. That's today. Okay, it's not, pea, it's not blood cell size today, it's pea size, but we're also shrinking technology at a factor of 100 3D volume per decade. So these will be 100,000 times smaller in 25 years. So if you go out 25 years and talk to a biological human like you or I, uh, you'll be talking to a cyborg, to a hybrid of biolog biology and, and machine. And people say, oh, I don't want to combine with machines. They're thinking about today's machines. And I don't want to combine with those machines either because they're very too crude. They're not at human levels. I'm talking about a new level of machine. We probably need a new word. That's just as supple and subtle and complex and rich and emotional as human intelligence. And we will expand our intelligence. We will make ourselves smarter, remember better, solve problems better. Uh, we'll be able to think out on the, on the sort of cloud of computing and automatically access information, put our brains on the internet and so on. So it's going to be a gradual process. But at some point, Ray Kurzweil, you, you, you are going to exist in uh, what substrate? It's going to be in the web? You know, there'll be an intermediate period where I'm partly biology and partly non-biology, but it's important to understand the, the non-biological portion, the machine portion, is doubling in power every year. The, the biology is not changing much at all. So if you go out far enough, go out another de decade, the machine part is far more powerful than the biological part. So we're, and the machine part will be able to simulate and model the biological part. So the biology doesn't really matter anymore. And you'll get to a point where the, not, the machine part predominates. And that will really be out on, on the sort of cloud of computing that's already being evolved. Uh, and, I mean, what am I today? Even though you say, well, you're this physical stuff, Ray. You know, you're not out on the cloud and web. you're not out on the Internet. You're right here, physical, and there's a brain here. But that's actually uh, completely different particles than it was six months ago. Uh, all the cells die and are recreated. The neurons persist, but the components of the neurons, like the tubules and the filaments, uh, the ion channels, those die in a few days and get rebuilt. We're completely different stuff than we were six months ago. There's a continuity of pattern. It's just like, uh, talk about a river. You say, well, is that the same river? The water's completely different. How could it be the same river? Well, the pattern is the same. If you look at the pattern that the water makes around a rock, that pattern can remain the same for hours, for years. But the water changes in a, in a small fraction of a second. But it's, we call it the same river because it's the same pattern. I'm the same person I was a year ago, not because I'm the same stuff, but because I'm the same pattern. Now today that pattern, you know, it all fits in my skull. And, uh, but that's just an arbitrary limitation. If we keep the pattern the same, the pattern evolves slowly and gradually, it evolves, but it has 